Is the new Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra really worth buying? Instead of getting a 16 inch MacBook Pro fully loaded with the 32 core M1 Max and having the extra portability, well today we will find out because we are gonna be comparing a ton of real world things such as CPU and GPU performance, photo editing, video editing, coding, music production, 3D rendering and more so that we can find out which is the smartest option. Is it really that much faster to lock you into a desktop? Let's go ahead and jump into it. Now, as far as specs, you guys can see right here, both the prices and the configurations of the systems. We have the $4,000 M1 Ultra base model, as well as the fully upgraded in terms of performance with 128 gigs of RAM and the 64 core GPU. Our MacBook is a $3,500 model that does have the full CPU and GPU performance in it. Starting off with Speedometer 2.0 for day-to-day -day snappiness and regular tasks, honestly guys, you will not notice the difference. Both of these systems are insanely snappy and that's also similar because the Geekbench single core performance is almost identical. The actual cores that these chips use are the same. Now in terms of multi-core performance, the Mac Studios here have nearly double the performance because they have literally double the cores. So you do have more performance, but we'll see how much that actually makes a difference in real world applications. Applications. Now, as far as Cinebench, when we're maxing out these processors at full blast, the scaling once again is very good, not double, but it is close. So if you're rendering with the CPU, for example, this test Cinema 4D, well, you do get a really good boost. And if you're working with stuff like this all the time, it is definitely worth it if you can be at your desk. Now, as far as graphics, testing out GFX Bench's Metal, here we would expect to have a doubling of performance from the 32 core M1 Max to the 64 core M1 Ultra. But in reality, we're only seeing a boost of 56% where it should be double. Now, this is very well optimized. This is a gaming benchmark that is really optimized for metal, and we're seeing these diminishing returns. Now, even the 310 FPS in the M1 Max also didn't scale well compared to previous chips. So as we see, as we're scaling in higher amounts, we do get those diminishing returns. Now, 3D Mark's Wildlife is also a great benchmark, and here we're seeing actually better scaling, but it's still not double. So do not expect to get double the performance. And this is actually a really good scenario. We're gonna see some more graphics results in just a bit. Now, I went ahead and I broke this down to the amount of frame rates per core and the 32 core M1 Max is 3.8 FPS per core compared to 3.3. So you guys see those diminishing returns. Now jumping back into some real world CPU tests, as far as Xcode, we see a difference of 23%. Now this is a bit disappointing because Xcode does use a lot of that unified memory and also all the CPU cores get maxed out. Now this is a broad benchmark that was made for us by Maxim Aramenko. So if you have some things that maybe lean more on the cores, less on memory, you might see a little bit of a boost. Uh, but in this case, if I was somebody that worked with Xcode, I would not buy the Mac Studio because you get portability with the MacBook and the performance is so good that it pretty much matches just a couple seconds slower than the 28 core Mac Pro that costs about 20 grand. So you might see that, hey, the Mac Studio is 23% faster, but in reality, it doesn't matter. Both are insanely fast because of the unified memory compared to previous Intel computers that you might own. Now, as far as music production with Logic, we are using the new Logic Pro benchmark. You guys can go and check out all the specifics there. And we don't get double scaling, but it is kind of close. It's getting there. This is CPU based. So we're getting a good difference in performance. But once again, if you're somebody doing this, um, the amount of tracks and plugins that the Mac can handle with its unified memory and having up to 64 gigs of RAM on the MacBook, it's just incredible. And having that portability for a lower price and not having to buy a display, keyboard, mouse, all of that is so insane. It's gonna handle the workload for most people. Now, for a very small select few people out there that are used to having you know, 128 gigs, 256 gigs of RAM with their Intel system, well, you might need the M1 Ultra just to get more RAM to hold a lot more plugins. But if you're not somebody that absolutely knows that you already need this, well, then you don't. The MacBook is gonna be incredible. For those of you guys working 
working with Blender. Of course, we have the new metal-based version of Blender. And here, we actually started out with the EV engine, which is great for previews, it's really quick. And we are not seeing really good scaling as far as graphics, which it uses at all. Now switching over to cycles with GPU, we're seeing a boost. I mean, it is noticeable here in Party Tug, but at the same time, the scaling isn't amazing. Um, same thing goes for classrooms. So I would say if you are somebody that wants to do a lot of 3D rendering in Blender, exporting or other programs, the Ultra will give you a better job, but be ex expect to wait roughly about a year to get optimization. We're actually talking to multiple people that work with software that say we need optimization for these new Ultra chips. Even though Apple said it shows up as one, they are not being fully utilized and they will get a lot better. In that case, I would go with an Ultra. Now for you photo editors out there, we're seeing some great improvements in Lightroom. Exporting is about 40% faster in some tasks like previews, it could be up to 50% faster. So the performance is great. Now it's not scaling double, but I will say the performance jump compared to Intel to the MacBook was insane. And if you're somebody that needs the best performance, you're working with tons of files, like for example, people do wedding photography, you have a lot of data, or you have huge, uh, for example, panoramas, you will see a nice boost and it is worth it if you want the most performance. Now, as far as day-to-day -day editing, adjusting layers for more basic stuff, I could not tell a difference whatsoever. So if you care more about smoothness and brushes and stuff, I don't think it's worth it unless you spend a lot of time sitting there waiting for your system to render and process. Now for Photoshop, the results are even worse. We did a huge panorama with 16, 50 megapixel raw images. We expect to see a good increase because we have double the CPU performance at scale as well, but in fact, the difference was only about 18% faster. Photoshop is not well optimized in general. If for a higher performance, it's more single core based, and with these ultra chips, it is not optimized at all. Don't buy a Mac Studio if you spend a lot of time in Photoshop, unless you need 128 gigs of RAM. And for video editing, this is where it gets tough because a lot of programs, including even DaVinci Resolve, are not optimized for the M1 Ultra yet. We have waited two weeks to do some of these video editing comparisons. Apple hasn't even released the pre-release final cut that they use for all their performance stats on stage and what they send to their reviewers to give great numbers to people. They are not releasing it, we can't get our hands on it. Now, because of that, if you're working with regular H.264 files, well, the performance is the same. And not only that, but the GPU amount used, working with a 4K timeline, which has multiple effects, color grades, uh, LUTs, the GPU is only used 50% on the MacBook Pro. Uh, that means that you can stack multi-cam, you can stack crazy amounts of titles and effects, and you will not be affected by it. You can handle it very well with this MacBook. Now, if you go to H.265, you see that the render times have not improved at all, uh, but it is much quicker. So if you need to speed up your system as far as exports, just going to H.265 will give you a nice improvement. Now, as far as the overhead here, uh, we're nearing 80%, 75% with the MacBook, meaning if you're somebody who has a lot of heavy effects and titles, you will benefit from a Mac Studio. Now, as far as the heavier things, this is one area where some people would want to buy a Mac Studio. For example, if you're working with RAW files, if you're working with ProRes, we are seeing some improvements, but once again, it's like 34% as far as regular 4K ProRes to ProRes. That gain is there because we have extra decoders that are being used, uh, but unfortunately, even with Final Cut, the GPUs are not optimized well for these Ultra chips. So the bottleneck here in this test isn't actually the encoders, it is mostly just not enough graphics performance. The same thing for 8K ProRes RAW, uh, we're only seeing 22% faster compared to the base $4,000 one, a little bit faster for the 64 core model. Not a huge increase and it is disappointing. And then uh, as far as thermals and fans, this thing runs silent, that's a huge benefit compared to having the MacBook on your desk, but the MacBook, as far as thermal throttling, even though in these crazy tests like this 8K RAW, where it's maxing out the CPU and the GPU, that is the only test where it will throttle. But even though it throttles, you don't lose that much more performance. And having double the CPU cores, double the GPU cores, and four times the memory, 
only results in roughly, I don't know, 40% faster exports in handling. So I would not worry about thermal throttling and even fan noise in the MacBook unless you're really hitting the CPU and GPU, and that is quite rare because most applications use either one or the other. Now, as far as value proposition, if you wanna get the best bang for the buck, if you care about that, the MacBook Pro is gonna be your best bet. 3,500 bucks, it is incredibly fast. Uh, with the Mac Studio, with the Ultras, you have to spend more money, you have to buy a keyboard and mouse and a display, it is not portable, you don't have the beautiful speakers and everything built into here, so you're gonna spend a lot more money for not that much more performance and we're still gonna have to wait for more optimizations. So overall, I think most of you guys out there, even if you're gonna, if you're willing to spend more to get the Ultras, your best bet is just to get a MacBook. The value is incredible with what you get, and it's already gonna be so much faster than your previous computer. That's what I would recommend to most of you. Now, for those of you guys that are heavily, heavily dependent on graphics, if you do a ton of 8K RAW and 8K timelines and you need really great playback uh, or Blender 3D rendering, it's all GPU based, if you're willing to wait for optimizations and them taking a while, then maybe you can buy one of these, but expect to take some time to wait. So there you guys go, let me know your thoughts down below. If you guys are interested in seeing how this setup compares with the base $2,000 one, we actually have a triple comparison that falls in line with the 24 core model on the MacBook as well. You guys can check that out right over there, it's so detailed. And click above to subscribe to help us reach our goal of 1 million subscribers, we would definitely appreciate it. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next video.